This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and this is the TAM to machine knit, and I'm revisiting it because it is so much easier to do this TAM if you use a sew-as-you-go technique. So my original video, which involved a different technique, is coming down, and this new TAM Take Two is going up. Here's what the front of the TAM, the top of the TAM, looks like with this wonderful pinwheel design. I didn't do any fair isle. This was simply created by using a self-striping sock yarn. And here's what the other side of the TAM looks like. Here's a ribbing. And the sew-as-you-go that I was referring to is this seam right here running all the way around on the ribbing. I knit a lot of socks and the TAM takes a little over 50 grams so I like this project for using odds and ends of sock yarn. It's way too pretty to discard and yet I might only have small amounts. Now I need a whole 50 grams and I have 50 grams of this one color scheme so in fact there's about 75 grams there so not quite enough for a pair of socks but enough for a TAM. So I will thread up and get started. I've now done 16 rows on tension 3 of 1 by 1 ribbing and my next step is going to be transferring every single stitch up to the main bed. You can do this easily with a double eye transfer tool. And I will come back on camera as soon as all my stitches are moved up to the main bed needles. Once all of the stitches are transferred up to the main bed, drop the ribber and cover it. If you don't have these plastic ribber covers, you could use a towel. But go ahead and cover it and it'll give you less trouble as you continue to do the TAM. Now, you want to take the knitting off on waste yarn. You'll need to change to the regular fabric presser and use a very strongly contrasting waste yarn. I have chosen a bright yellow that is not in my color scheme at all. It'll make it easy for me to see the stitches, the open stitches, from the blue color scheme peeking through the waste yarn. I'll put about seven or eight rows on that and then take the knitting off the machine. Okay, and here I am taking it off. Here's my knitted band. I'm going to install it on the TAM using the Sew As You Go method picking up these open loops next to the yellow waste yarn. The needle arrangement for the TAM itself is from 22 on one side to 23 on the other side. It is a total of 45 stitches. I will begin with waste yarn and once the waste yarn's in I'll start with the regular yarn for the TAM. Begin the TAM by threading up with the regular yarn and knitting one row on tension six from right to left. As soon as you have that row knitted, you need to change the setting of the carriage so you can work hold. So switch this lever here over to hold. Then you also need to put most of the needles into hold position so they won't knit. The needles from needle number 10 over to the right, go and hold. That means that there are 12 needles that are in working position as you start the very beginning of the TAM. In fact, these 12 needles are going to be in working position for the entire hat. Now for the first sew-as-you-go job, using a single transfer tool and working always on this leftmost needle, you're going to hang loops from the cuff onto the end of the knitting right here. So I'm taking the very first loop from the cuff and hanging it on that needle. Now I'm going to knit to the right. Now here's where the pattern begins. 
always, when the carriage is on the right, you do two steps. Step one, wrap the yarn and decrease. That is a short row decrease where you bring the needle back halfway so that it is in between the needles in work and the needles out of work. That will knit that stitch the next time. And step two, pick up the next stitch from the cuff of the hat and hang it on that leftmost needle. Then you knit two rows. When you knit the first row, it goes ahead and knits that stitch that I had halfway back and knit back. Now we're on the right hand side again, so we do those two steps again. The wrapped increase and we pick up the next loop from the cuff. I just want that thread and nothing else. And we hang it on the leftmost needle and knit two rows again. Increase, pick up that loop, and guess what? I'm going to be repeating this procedure all the way across until I have every single stitch in work. And then I'll come back on camera and you'll be able to see that I will have made the first triangle of the hat. Here's what the first triangle looks like and I am on the right hand side with my carriage so before I go back I went ahead and hung one more stitch and brought one more stitch into work. You have to do that every time you're on the right hand side. Now when I go to the left I'm not going to knit back. I have a step to do first. The thing I need to do first is bring needle number 10 and beyond into hold so that I can start the second triangle. And of course this is a good time to move the weights up. I'm going to put one weight here and I'll put one weight over here and in a while when I have more needles in work that weight will get used. Now I'm just going to repeat the same procedure. I'm going to knit across, I'm going to work my increase, and I'm going to hang one more stitch from my band. Now I will do this until I have all the needles in work and that will be another triangle. I'm going to repeat those triangles six times until I've used up all of the band. Then I'll come back and show you what to do after that. On the very last row, make sure that you've picked up every single loop from the ribbing and go ahead and do your typical increase Knit that last row with the garment yarn. Then cut the garment yarn but leave a long enough piece so that you can do the Kitchener stitch to graph that together. The final step for the knitting part of the project is to take it off on waist yarn. so much fun to see what we have when we have something completely knitted. So let's get it off the machine and have a look at it. Here's what I have. It's like a wrinkled piece of pie with a missing slice. I'm going to Kitchener stitch the crown of the hat right on down to here and I like to do that from the wrong side. Holding the wrong sides together I've threaded with the yarn that comes from the end of the knitting. I've gone across to the other piece and I've sewed through there with my yarn. Then I'm going to go in the second of the stitches between the waist yarn, come back to the first side and go through the very first stitch in the waist yarn, which is right there. and I draw that up. Now I'm going to go into the second stitch on this same side, 
go back and use that first stitch again on the other side. Every stitch gets used twice in Kitchener stitch. You can graft with Kitchener from the right or the wrong side, but the wrong side, I think, is easier. I go to a new stitch, go to the other piece of knitting, and go into a previously used stitch. Draw that up. Now I go to a new stitch on the same side, go across and use that same stitch on the opposite side again. And I'm just going to Kitchener my way across this until I get to the place where the knitting turns, which will be right here. Then it's going to be a little different looking on the crown of the hat, but done about the same way. At this point I've sewed to here and what will happen as I turn the corner and I go up onto the crown of the tam is that one side will have stitches that are close together like these stitches and the other side will have stitches that are farther apart. So what do you do? Just ignore the fact that those stitches are a little farther apart and sew it together. A lot of my readers had written me about this tam and said they were fine until they got to this part and then they weren't sure what to do about the stitches looking different from one side to the other. But just be sure to catch that stitch that shows between the waist yarn and follow on along the top of the tam and you'll be fine. Now I'm going to continue sewing until I get to the center of the crown of the tam and I'll show you what to do in the very center. Here's how my seam looks now that I've sewed it. And I'm going to turn it inside out and remove the waist yarn. Now I still have the thread and the needle hanging there. So I'm just going to unravel all of this and come back on camera after that's off. After I have that seam done and the waist yarn removed, then I've got this little trick I do when I have round circles to sew up. I just go through each of the loops around the circle and take a sort of a whip stitch and I typically go a little more than all the way around, like all the way around plus an extra stitch or two. Then I just pull up and if you flip that over, it looks really great on the other side. Then I can just end off that yarn. The next step is a short mattress stitch just from here to here. It joins the ribbing around the brim of the hat. I'll come back after I have that little bit of mattress stitch done. That's how it looks with the mattress stitching done. Now you might be wondering how we're going to go from this lumpy mess to a lovely smooth tam like this. Well, here's what we do. I take a full-size dinner plate and I pull the tam onto it. It should fit on there loosely if your tam is about the right size. Then I flip it over and I'm going to sew all around this inside edge with my waist yarn just temporarily just to hold it while it's blocking. The waist yarn goes in the very rolled edge of these stitches all the way around the tam. This will, by the way, make a beautiful edge on the ribbing. Now I'm going to tie an overhand knot and pull this up. I pull it up pretty hard. Then I'll just tie it in a bow. You 
have a look at it. Make sure it's good smooth. Now this gets steamed thoroughly. I'll just hold the steam over it until it's really saturated and then I let it dry overnight. Well the tam is finished drying. I took the waste jarn out from the middle and I'm just going to pull it off the plate so we can see how it looks. It turned out just fine. It's flat and smooth and the sock yarn made an interesting pinwheel pattern. Hope you'll try this pattern. It really is a lot of fun to make.